Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season one, episode two of The Haunting of Bly Manor. I'm really, really excited about this. I love this show so far. That was I thought it was a fantastic first episode and I I actually liked the episode more on the rewatch and in the edit than I even did watching it the first time round. So first I should say if you're watching this on YouTube, please come and join us on Patreon. You get early access to these reactions. You also get to see them full length rather than these little highlight clips that are able to go on YouTube. We've also got a Discord server, so we have lots of chats about why we love the show and get much more in depth than obviously I'm able to sit in here on my links in a reaction. So come over to Patreon, hang out with us there. But yeah, we've got several, <clears throat> we've got several kind of really weird things happening all at the same time here. We've got Owen and his mother, his mum is ill, but we don't know, we've not seen her, we don't know what the nature of the illness is, and why did it bring him back from Paris, given that he really wanted to escape Bly, all of that kind of stuff going on, I'm, I'm interested to hear more about his story. We've got Hannah Gross, the housekeeper, who seems to have suffered a loss she lit four candles and we only know about three deaths at the moment so who's the fourth candle for and i keep going back to her conversation with danny in the church and thinking about like where did the parents die how did the parents die is that in any way related to what's happening in the house what happened to rebecca the lady in the lake the plague doctor like what 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 how do these things interweave i'm pretty sure i'll get my answers to that as the show goes on but that's on my mind the kids were a real mystery too they seem to flip between one thing and another so flora seems to be actually in conversation with rebecca uh that scene where she was being bathed it appeared that she was in conversation with Rebecca and has some knowledge as to the danger that can be caused by various spirits in the house. Her doll house, I noticed, I was looking more closely at the dolls. I think one of them was the plague doctor. I think one of them was Rebecca, if we assume Rebecca's black and she's the, the woman that's in the one of the portraits on the wall in the title sequence. I feel like every single every single doll is actually representative of a person alive or dead in the house and i think i saw the lady in the lake as well but that's just my theory and on the other hand we have miles miles seems to veer between being a kind of cute boisterous but vulnerable boy on the one hand and then in the next moment he signs and has the presence of like a rapey man a rapey grown man it's creepy as fuck so i and i so i actually struggle to trust miles at all because of that but i'm interested in knowing because i'm thinking wait is that kind of rapey man thing is that the guy that fucked over rebecca did he die recently? Has he returned to the house? I've got no idea. But yeah, um, did not like them locking her in the closet at all. Um, oh, and the other mystery as well we've got is, is Danny herself because Danny was already being haunted by something prior to even stepping foot in Bly Manor. You know, I'm starting to wonder, did some, did someone die in America? Did she feel responsible? I think because of the eyes looking like the headlights, I feel like, did she run, you know, did she run a child over or something? Like, did she, or did, like, and maybe if she wasn't literally responsible, she feels responsible. I don't know. But there's so, clearly she is running from something. We know that. I know that her mother said it and it upset her. And But it feels like she definitively is running from something because she has to cover all of the reflective surfaces. Because if she doesn't, then she sees the black outline figure with the headlights for eyes. 
so we don't know what's happening there so there's just a lot of questions and on top of that i'm sure bly manor is going to be a character in and of itself we've got this plague doctor who seems to be literally in every scene at night behind um danny or another character so he was in we've seen him downstairs you know in the kitchen and in the hallways we've seen him upstairs in the hallway we've seen him in Miles's room we've seen him in Flora's room so he seems to have free reign of the house I'm intrigued as to whether or not where can't the spirits access because I've already seen some people in the comment section suggesting that they interpreted it as the kids attempting to protect Danny from the lady in the lake who we assume the footprints were from at this point but for that to be the case then that they would need to know that what the spirits can't go in certain rooms they can't unlock doors they can't move through doors really i'm not sure about that um yeah strange so i'm very excited about this episode i want to see more so without further ado, let's have at it. That's so freaky with the faces. Oh yeah, and who's he? I think that's Rebecca. That's who I think Rebecca is. I don't know enough about the gardener lady to have an opinion yet. But they did say Danny felt like she knew she'd seen her before, and I wonder if that might be true on like a spiritual level. That music box sound in there. It's brilliant. Oh, fuck that. No. Nope. The housekeeper was no stranger to muddy footprints. A few times a year, it seemed, she started her days with a mop. Always the same path, from the door to the forbidden wing and back again. Door to the forbidden wing and back again. The door got stuck. Did it? Honest. <laughs> I don't believe you. That's the issue. Yeah. <laughs> Miles! The fuck? Miles, what are you doing? <laughs> Miles, I just smoked that bit. Oh my god. That was entirely unacceptable, and now you are going to finish mopping. But that's not fair. Hey, it's just a bit of mud. <laughs> I mean, every few weeks, feels like these two are off on a midnight run, and Muggins here is left to mop up their mud. Every four weeks. I don't like the cellar. It's perfectly dreadful down there. Stay away from the cellar. Can I stay and have a glass of orange juice with Owen, please? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not being cheeky or anything. It's just, I quite hate the cellar. It's perfectly dreadful. <laughs> Is that all right? I'll just be a sec. Somebody's brother threw their doll down the laundry chute. Pause. Wait there. So, episode one, everything was perfectly splendid. And this episode, everything is perfectly dreadful. What's going on? What's going on? Play. Oh. Oh, fuck off. We've been here before. What was that? What the fuck was it? There's something down here. Just hang on, I'm trying. Is that a fucking Come hand? On. Theo! Fuck! Fuck! Fuck No more, no more of this. No. Brothers can be perfectly dreadful sometimes, can't they? He isn't, though. He really he, isn't. He looked like he was helping, to be fair. Oh, fuck off. What's coming? What is coming?
Oh, oh shit! Look who I found. What's her name? A fucking doll moved. Oh no. Oh no. Are you gonna hang it in your room? For protection? No, I took it down. Why? Because it doesn't work. Miles! Miles! Oh no. In go get dressed. Did, did the doll get in? You know what I mean, the 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 thing the doll's protecting him. Miles? Oh shit. Here we go. Miles? Miles, are you okay? Miles isn't there. Oh, he's back at school. What happened? Thank you. What happened at school? And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. And the herd rushed down the deep stoke into the lake and were drowned there. They needed permission, the demons. Permission to? To enter the pigs. Excellent question, Wingrave. And that actually is the, the big takeaway here, so thank you for asking that. We are, all of us, free to make our own choices. Mm. It's one of the most important gifts that God has given us. See, evil exists, and we are tempted, but we're not compelled. So, yes, they did need his permission. <laughs> Judging by the writing on the envelope, I assume oh, it's from you. Very thoughtful of her. I have it waiting for you. You're in none of this alone, is all I'm driving at. Thank you, sir. Well, it's brief, I promise, but uh, it's helped me on more than one occasion. John 16, 22. Tea seems absolutely lovely there. But I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice. And your joy no man shall take from you. You were to fix a clock. Wingrove! Wingrove! <laughs> oh. Does he fall and hurt himself? Oh, shit, kiddo. Come on. Miles. Wingrove! He's mossy as well. God. Fucking hell. Wingrave! Oh. What's going on? Wingrave! What took him? Did he just try and kill himself? Why'd you jump? <laughs> just looking for the right key. What was that? Key. I didn't jump. Key to what? A movie, mate. Okay. <laughs> oh dear. Trying to find the right key, huh? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> What's he doing? Oh my god, he's going to come. Okay, everybody, back to class. Now, go, on, all of you. So you started it. Had he wronged you in some way? said something to you, something to set you off. Hooper's parents, they could push for a suspension, and the headmaster will want to mollify them. Oh, but shit. We all do terrible things sometimes. That's expected. It's, it's baked into us from the start. Terrible guilt burning inside your chest, that's, that's what distinguishes us in God's eyes. None of us are blameless, except the soul that's not yet conceived, and the animals. Like Pidge over there. They're the only innocents. He's gonna kill that bloody pigeon. And it wasn't fair, was it? Oh, well. What Jesus did to the pigs in the demon story. Maybe not. The Lord works in mysterious ways, and death is something to mourn, not fear. 
And you've had to deal with death far, far more than a child your age should. Far more. They're not coming back. Afraid not. That's not fair either. No, it isn't. Why did the bad ones get to come back? Oh. Not them. Valid question. I'm really worried that bird is going to end up being killed. <gasps> what the fuck? Is that Miles? <sighs> could do with like this. Wingrave. Your parents and your au pair. More than we could hope to understand. Don't. And the weight of all that could cause one, anyone, to do terrible things, even if they didn't mean to. It could press one, drive one to commit acts that... We are not compelled. What our chaplain is saying is that we're going to start with an apology and go from there. I'm sorry. I know you are, Miles. Together, I'm you and I... I'm sorry. I didn't do worse. Get off its head. Spread out the insides. Burn it. I'm sorry I didn't do worse. <coughs> right. Oh, God. Get Master Wingrave's uncle on the telephone, please. I'm sorry, Father. And you did find your key. That's all. And so, the reason for Miles' expulsion was difficult to pin down. Why he'd done any of these things, no one would understand. Only the letter from Flora would offer a possible clue as to why he tried so, so hard to be sent home. So the key was, he was trying to find the key to get out, to get home. Okay. 